Hi guys, thank you for choosing uh, to come to this uh, wonderful presentation instead of enjoying uh, the uh, spring sun. So kudos for that. And uh, okay, so let's start, I guess. So my name is Edvinas. I've been working at Wix for a couple of years and currently I'm a React Native developer and uh, we work uh, in this uh, team called Wix Groups. And yeah, and uh, before I start my presentation, I would just like to uh, get to know you and I would like to ask has anybody already like uh, played around with React Native or uh, works with React Native? Okay, okay, I see. And who would like to, who has uh, almost non, no knowledge and would like to try it out? All right, I see. So uh, my presentation is just a introductionary uh, kind of type where I will show you what React Native is and how it works and uh, why is it, uh, why, why do even people bother creating this kind of stuff. So, uh, the agenda for this topic is like I'll compare React with React Native, we'll skim through the, through the uh, through, skim through how it, uh, React Native works and uh, the reason it exists, I'll show you some demos and we'll wrap it up with, uh, with like final thoughts, pros and cons kind of style. And uh, before, uh, before, uh, present, before I, uh, I started doing this presentation, I thought I could start this presentation by talking about React, but, but, but then I thought, what if I make a rap presentation? <laughs> no, but seriously guys, no rap presentation, it's not 2010 anymore or 2008, <laughs> if anybody remembers those, um, but I thought I w would start out but with... Will go <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but uh, I've been watching recently this Netflix uh, documentary about uh, hip-hop, so that's why uh, uh, this happened. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I thought out uh, to start out with a joke. Uh, the joke ended and let's begin. Uh, so, what is React? So, oh, this is a really slow transition uh, with a wrap uh, picture. So, React is, uh, React is a JavaScript library and it's meant for creating user interfaces. Uh, mind you, it's not React Native yet, it's just React. So, in React, React itself is not a complete solution. Uh, it does not assume anything about your uh, full app and usually if you want to build a full complete solution you need other libraries as well. And uh, React does one thing and it does one thing really good, it's building user interfaces. So a user interface can be anything from like a button on a microwave or a button in a spatial uh, and if uh, that machine understands JavaScript, we can use React to describe the user interface. And uh, that's, uh, honestly, that's, uh, that's, there is to it. And let's go through some uh, notable features of React. So the first one being um, that in React, everything, you have to think about everything in uh, components. So, Everything is composed out of components. You can think of components as like small functions that you can reuse them or uh, compose bigger functions from smaller ones. Uh, mind you, that unlike uh, pure functions, React components have a private state, so which may change over time. And uh, don't think uh, of React components as pure functions. And the code you see, it's uh, JSX and uh, it's uh, like a syntax extension to JavaScript. And uh, like React recommends uh, using this to, uh, to describe your uh, user interface. And it might remind you of a template language, but actually it isn't. It's, uh, it comes with the full power of uh, JavaScript. Okay, next, uh, next notable feature. Uh, these are reactive updates, so Whenever the component state changes, React 
reacts to those changes and, uh, and automatically updates the DOM. And the uh, thing about the DOM, like, unlike many of its prede predecessors, um, React does not operate directly with the DOM, uh, rather it has its own virtual DOM and it does the updates there. Uh, it kind of figures out what was updated and what actually needs to be updated in the real DOM and then uh, uh, does exactly that. This, uh, this method only, not only allow, is more way efficient, but it removes a big chunk of complexity uh, and we don't need to, as developers, we don't need to think about how and what and when do we need to update in the actual DOM. React just kind of figures it all out. It spits out the actual DOM. And, uh, and yeah, and then you can actually focus on your, uh, on your data and the way you structure your data and the way you represent those, uh, this data using a uh, user interface. And this is, a, this is the part where I want to talk about React Native a bit, because it's kind of the same, but different. Uh, React Native is a JavaScript framework. It's not a library anymore. It's a framework for writing real, natively rendering uh, mobile applications for iOS and Android. No Windows Phone. Okay, so <laughs> uh, React, in short, React lets you build these applications using JavaScript. And uh, it does that using the same design as React. So all the good stuff that I talked previously about React, it's still there. And you still use components to describe your user interface. And uh, one more thing, uh, using React Native, when we build the app, we don't build a mobile web app, we don't uh, build an HTML5 app or a hybrid app, we build real native apps. So we get two apps by the end of the day, one for iOS and one for Android. So, and uh, I'm quoting here, you build a real mobile app that's indistinguishable uh, from uh, an app built with Objective-C, Swift, Java, or Kotlin. This was straight out of from uh, React Native website. And uh, in most cases, it's true. And uh, honestly, sometimes you can't tell the difference. It runs really smooth. And uh, I'll explain a bit why uh, a bit later. But, uh, but yeah, so, and the real focus of React Native is developer velocity. So what's, what's the promise is that learn once and write anywhere. So it's the holy grail of multi-platform uh, solutions, I guess. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the introduction about React Native. And now you might be thinking, so we're writing one app, right? Well, uh, well kinda. Uh, as I said, by the end of the day, we still have two apps, two native apps. One is like an Android APK and the other one is an iOS app. And then you're thinking, probably, hopefully, uh, but all the code is exactly the same. Well, yeah, again, kind of. Uh, the native impl implementations are completely different. Um, but, for example, if you want to make your apps do the same thing but look differently, in uh, like the best example would be make your iOS app beautiful and Android uh, kind of ugly, uh, which is the theme uh, that I'm seeing. Um, so you can do that. Uh, you can do that easily uh, by using some couple of tricks. But if you choose to make your apps both beautiful and do the same thing and look the same, uh, the JavaScript part will be identical. All right. So let's get to the meat and potatoes of this presentation. Um, how does it work? Uh, and in order to answer that question, uh, we'll need to take a look at the bridge. I found this really beautiful picture of a bridge. Put it there. There you go, you got a slide. <laughs> anyway, so uh, let's imagine this sh a situation uh, where a user uh, clicks something and then we have this interesting, uh, interesting uh, Division of responsibilities, 
the native part understands that the user physically clicked something, right? Then it sends a event via the bridge to the JavaScript part. And in JavaScript, uh, what React Native uh, would want you to do is implement your business logic uh, inside of JavaScript because it's really easy to do. Uh, and once you've done your business, because uh, apps are meant for business, uh, you, uh, the JavaScript part then uh, has this kind of instructions what to do and sends them to the native part and the native part uh, builds the native views and uh, gives the user some feedback. So what happened here is uh, that we get like kind of, we get to eat the cake and keep it, meaning that we have like two of best worlds, both worlds, best of both worlds. So in the native, the native part handles all the heavy lifting and animations and, and whatnot. So we get smooth performance uh, because most of the stuff is done in native. And on the JavaScript part, we just do our business, business stuff. So if we want to do some API calls or whatever. So, and yeah, and honestly, that's, that's that, and uh, that's how it works. Uh, it's uh, since it's an introductionary part uh, uh, presentation. That's I, I think that's all you need to know about that. And then you're thinking, but why even bother? I mean, you could just make two apps, and that's it. Well, as Elon Musk said, cash rules everything around me. I'm just joking. This was Wu Tang Clan. Uh, it's a rap, uh, rap. Band uh, was really popular in the 90s, um, but <laughs> yeah, but but the way I see it, this quote is represents what React Native is all about. Just in my opinion, in my opinion. So imagine the situation: you need to build an app. Probably uh, you can imagine that. And uh, in order to do that, you need to be on both platforms, probably most of the times. So what do you do? You need to hire two developers. So one will be build an iOS app and the other one will be build the Android app. And these both ecosystems have absolutely almost nothing in common. So it's really difficult to find a person that has knowledge about both platforms and is able to, uh, able to build some kind of a, uh, a usable app. And uh, this is where React Native jumps in and says, hey, guys, please come in. <laughs> no, it doesn't say that. The React Native says that instead of having two people, oh, and God forbid you want a web app. So you need a third developer, which will develop the, the web application. Um, so React Native tells, hey, you can have uh, a couple of web developers and you can have uh, have an app for uh, two apps for the price of one. And honestly, this is really compelling. I've read a couple of articles that they tried to implement the same app using one iOS app. So they built it, they built the the same app using React Native and uh, like native iOS app. And the React Native one took 30% 30 30 time less to produce, uh, they had some couple of issues, and the performance was uh, like almost indistinguishable. So, cash rules everything around me. All right, so um, enough uh, marketing material. Let's go to to the demo, and after that, we'll just wrap it up with uh, um, some final thoughts with pros and cons. So, in order to develop uh, React Native apps. If you want to develop one uh, for iOS, uh, first things first, you'll need a Macintosh. Sorry guys, <laughs> Apple just does not allow you to have a simulator on any other machine. You can try Hackintoshes and stuff, but you still need a Mac OS and that's probably not legal. So not recommending that. So kudos for Apple for taking our money. All right. Um, so the way we, uh, I'm 
now I'm in my project, so the way we do this, uh, I won't show you how to initialize this project because it's really simple. You can see it on the on the front page and uh, you can do it yourselves. But the way you do it after you initialize, uh, you type in React Native Start and then React Native Run Android. This will start the Android application and then React Native Run iOS. All right, hopefully this will work. Okay, <laughs> Android has difficulties. Okay. You see? So, we have two identical apps, except for this one re really uh, funny quirk. On Android, there's no icon for Apple. <laughs> <laughs> so, you see, on, on the iPhone, it works just fine, and here it's like, screw you. All right, so let's start from demo one. So, uh, I'll demonstrate uh, how this, that the bridge is real. So we'll see what kind of events do we, uh, uh, do we get uh, when, we, when we trigger something from via the bridge. So I'll show on the iPhone simulator, but you can do the same on the, uh, on the Android one. Okay, so in order to see the, the logs, uh, we need to click Command D and we start this debug JS remotely. So it runs our JavaScript somewhere here. And then you can see the logs. And the demo is we click a button and then the text appears. I know, right? It's revolutionary, guys. Hold your applause. Excitement. Yeah. I don't know. Really not necessary. Uh, okay, so let's now, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this, but some WebSocket things going on, and somewhere in these logs we should see whoop de whoop If you guys see it, please say stop. No, let's try this again. I, no, I just want to make sure it's not fake, you know, so I scroll. Now let's try search. Okay, there we go. Um, it doesn't show the full picture, but it's real. So uh, from the JavaScript part to the native part, we send this command uh, that show this text. And let's try to... Too many logs. There. Hmm? Yep. There we go. So uh, let's just go back a little. Back, back, back. There we go. So the native part sends uh, to the JavaScript part. Uh, it's some kind of a touch event started. And then JavaScript uh, does some kind of a, its own thing. Uh, yeah, it's uh, like a kind of a serialized so something. You click a button, it creates a, an object, then it serializes it, then it sends to JavaScript, then it deserializes it. Yes, yes, then yes. Then it yes. interprets it, then it sends it back. Yes. Nice. Yeah, exactly. It's fine until, uh, until you don't overload it. But so it it kind of behaves. Uh, so you just need kind of to have in mind that the bridge you need to make the bridge happy and don't cause a lot of traffic there. But you can play around with it, and uh, probably there's some project that shows uh, that shows the bottlenecks. But yeah, and uh, eventually the JavaScript sends a whoop de woo, blah blah blah, and uh, it goes on for uh, just this demonstration was to show you that that's the way it works and uh, it's real and I didn't uh, fool you guys. Right, let's go to the second demo. Aha, this one's going to be good. <laughs> so, and we go here. Um, in React Native applications, what I didn't tell you that you have, you kind of have like the JavaScript part and then you can have some native code as well that you can uh, expose to the 
uh, you can expose that native code to the JavaScript part, to React Native. So when I click on Show Native Toast, I, we get this native Android. You've all, you've all probably seen this uh, Toast. And uh, me being lazy, I didn't implement this on the iOS part because there is none, uh, no <laughs> a native toast there. So it crashes and, uh, and that's good. That's good because we can, uh, knowing that, we can make the applications kind of feel and look na more native and not like kind of generic apps. So uh, you can see the same. I'll show you a different demo here. So I've exposed this map component to React Native uh, in the native part and it works works like a charm but if I don't implement it in on Android it crashes and that's good uh, well in the map uh, <laughs> map case it's not so good because you need to implement it as well but you can do it easily I was just didn't bother all right let's continue to the Next demo. Oh, let's do the bonus one, okay? Um, so for the people who already work with React Native, this won't be a big surprise. But demo demo six, okay. All right. So we have this uh, this picture with some hello hello Wix. Uh, text. Um, so, and this is the the component. So instead of in React, if you know React, we use divs. Uh, so instead of divs in React Native, you use views, and you wrap text in a text component. So we have the text here. And the way we describe styles uh, is like this: you create a style sheet and define this object, and uh, and it works. So let's try and uh, let's try and see. Let's try centering it. it. Uses flexbox. So the way we reload is Command R, and we reload the whole app. But Command R is like pretty boring. So let's command uh, command this out, and let's do enable hot reloading, and prepare to be amazed. Uh, let me tell you. All right. All right. So we uncomment this, and then we save. And it works. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we can uh, we can change the text color to my favorite color in React Native is tomato, and there you go. And sure enough, uh, we have a text that's tomato color. All right, I have another uh, make it tappable. All right, let's make it tappable. Um, so if we want to tap something, just do it like this. I should be able. No, I yeah, should be able to tap it. I just put it on the whole thing. Uh, let's not do that. Let's put it here. So now the text is tappable. Okay, that makes more sense. Um, and on press. We can do something like um, this is alert, right? What? No, wait. Uh, yeah, I need to import it. That's why it's angry. Alert dot alert, and then we get a title. All right, and we get uh, also with React Native. Ah, I wait, I didn't show you the best part. Oh, the Android simulator is shy. Where did it go? Honestly, I sometimes don't understand this Mac window management. Okay, um, let's kill it, I guess. Mm. 
yeah, it works. Okay, no Android Studio. It's Okay, so while it's doing its thing, kind of moving here. Let's let's see what other tasks did I have? Okay, component inbound. Also, we have this life cycle. So uh, whenever the component mounts, we fire this uh, this function, and uh, what it does, it just fetches something from the API and sets the state to the data that it gets. So let's try and take a look. Ah, yeah. Very good. And probably hot reloading won't work here because it does that. Um, let's filter out what's the response. Shit. Okay. Let's reload. There we go, and we fetched some data from the. As soon as the as the component mounted, we uh, fired this function, and uh, it fetched some data. So this is useful when uh, when you want to fetch something. And sure enough, you see this is the the best part that we made some changes to our code, and now we get the two two apps for the price of one. And honestly, this is uh, this is really amazing, and uh, that's the whole selling point of React Native. Okay, and let's just do one simple thing. Let's try to access this this dot state dot listings dot length. All right, and instead of a hello Wix, we'll display. And you saw. The initial state was a an empty array, and there was like this jump. It was it said zero, then it fetched data, and then we have 36 listings. And did the same. Oh, actually, the hot reloading worked as well. So uh, we have 36 here as well. So um, that's that's how how you do that. And just to continue with a couple of more demos. The last demo probably. Um, this is like what you would do day to day kind of things. So, mm -hmm. so, and uh, this is the way a a list is implemented. So on iOS natively, uh, if the list does not reach the bottom, you can still kind of scroll it. So this is a native uh, native behavior that you would expect in every iPhone. And on Android, when I kind of want to drag it, if it's not at the, if it's not over the bottom of the screen, it doesn't scroll. So as well, you get the native kind of feel in these two separate apps. So let's take a look how how is it done. And by this demo, I want to just show you the way you can use React and like everything is a component. So this is our screen and it has one component like a big component contact list let's take a look at the contact list um, so it renders a flat list it's kind of a list implementation react native and we can go and take a look this is another con component that has some kind of props and this component is the like eventual one cell that you see so we can change the title. Let's make it what color, guys? Tomato. Tomato. That's right. Okay, no hot reload here, but uh, here you instantly see the result. The same is true for Android, and uh, and this is how you would build some kind of a contact list or or something. So, kind of a list item, and we have different parts. One is the avatar, and we can uh, even use, let's do iOS, we can use a inspector 
to inspect these elements. So you can see even the values that uh, the font has. So it's good if your designer is pretty picky and you want to show him that you're right. You can use this tool. Okay. And I think, is that it for the demos? What, uh, how much time do we have, Martinez? Lots and lots? Okay. Yeah. It's up to you. It's up to me. Wow, I didn't have this power. <laughs> okay. So, I um, guess this wraps that section. And let's continue. Yeah, so pros and cons, let's talk about it because obviously uh, probably you're sacrificing something uh, when uh, you're doing React Native. So the prawns probably I made it really prominent. Uh, you get two apps for the price of one, um, one framework for multiple platforms and a kind of a declarative high level API to build stuff, to write your components. Uh, and do the user interface. Um, the cons would be, so if you're building some kind of a complex uh, application that needs lots of uh, native, uh, native components, React Native is probably not the way to go because, uh, well, that's just in my opinion, uh, because it has a small component pool for native components. So, for example, if you want some kind of a, what's it called, linear gradient, uh, you'll probably want a native library for that. And there is one for linear graded, gradient, but you might stumble upon something that you don't have a native component, and uh, then you need a <laughs> native developer. Um, but if you're doing some kind of a POC or a simple app, honestly, I think, this is the way to go, and I start, talked with a couple of my friends uh, who work in business companies. Uh, so they're really happy to use React Native. Um, and uh, I was just, this was, this is not a commercial, this actually happened. <laughs> and uh, uh, they really use it, and uh, the project managers just love it because, because of obvious reasons. Yeah, so the next con is that you might need, still might need a native developer for those occasional native components. And the framework still has some issues um, because it's still relatively young compared to the big guys, the uh, Android and iOS frameworks. So yeah, it's for you to decide whether, whether it's worth your while and, and whether it's worth implementing in, uh, in your environment. And just, uh, just a fun fact, uh, the Wix app is React Native since uh, day one. So that's that. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, thank you, thank you very much.